Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to go into the basics of producing an EDM song in Logic Pro X. So I'll be setting up the project, choosing a BPM, and then starting out with a chord progression and vocal. So when you open up Logic Pro, you're greeted with this page here. All you're going to do is select Empty Project. Then it will always default to Software Instruments, so I always create one of those. So all my EDM songs are either 100 BPM, 128 or around that sort of area. So today's project, I'm gonna do 100 BPM because I'm doing a lot of tropical house at the moment. So if this is your first time ever using Logic Pro, when you open up the window, it may look something like this with the wooden layers on the outside. So to get rid of that and to actually activate more advanced tools in Logic, you're gonna go into Logic Pro X, Preferences, Advanced Tools, and select Show Advanced Tools. So that'll give you another set of tools to actually help make the project sound better. So now we're in the project. All I've done so far is created a chord progression using a piano from Upright Piano. So that's a free plugin that you can download. I've added some channel EQ. So all I've done is added a low pass to get rid of the low end of the piano. And then these are resonant frequencies EQ. So if you don't know what resonant frequency is, it's basically a sound or frequency that doesn't sound good in the mix. So if I lift one of these up really high, you can hear it. So basically you just take a curve like this and you just go around finding all the frequencies that sound bad and then you duck them out. But you don't want to do it too much, otherwise the characteristics of the piano will start to change. Then OCT, which is compression. So I've just used 20% here. This again is a free plugin. It's very good. Dimension Expander, which comes with OTT. So that's to make the piano sound wider. And then Direction Mixer, which puts it in the mix. So everything below 200 Hertz in this piano is gonna be in mono and everything above is gonna be in stereo. So once I've created a chord progression, I try to find a vocal from Splice. If you don't know what Splice is, I'll show you quickly. It's basically an online platform where you can get vocals and a ton of samples. You basically pay a monthly subscription and you can download up to 100 samples there each month. So what I'll do is I'll go find a vocal and I'll be back once I found one. All right, guys, so I found a vocal that I think fits this chord progression quite well. And it sounds like this. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. I don't know why I looked you in this time. I must be blind. I guess I couldn't trust you. So the vocal at the moment sounds pretty boxy and very dry. So if this is your first time doing anything to vocals, you're just going to add a few things to make it sound better. First, I'm just going to cut out all of the low end in the vocal, and that so it doesn't interfere with the mix. Then I'm going to add a compression, so just OTT for that. I never saw it coming I couldn't read the signs I don't know why I let you in this so compression basically helps maintain the level of the vocal throughout. Next, I'm going to add supermassive, which is a delay. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. I don't know why I let you in this time. I must be blind. I guess I couldn't trust you. Could so it's just a very short delay, but it helps with the mix. And in Logic, there's two types of reverbs. I like to use chroma verb. Now I'm just gonna try and pick a preset that fits this. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. I don't know why I let you in this time. I must be blind. I guess I couldn't trust you. So I just adjust the settings to make the vocal sound better. From there, I hear there's some frequencies in there that are also resonant frequencies. So I'm just gonna work on cussing those out. So let's take a listen. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. So around the 500 hertz, sounds very boxy there. So I'm just going to remove some of those. I never saw it coming. And I think there's some around the 1K or 2K mark as well. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. I don't know. So this is all down to personal preference, but if it sounds bad when you lift it, you should probably remove it. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. I don't know why. I'm going to lift up the high end. I'm just going to cut out the low end again, just in case any of the other plugins added some lower frequencies. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. I don't know why I let 
So, so far we've just got a basic chord progression and a vocal. So that's a really good start to any song because you can build off there very easily. I never saw it coming. I couldn't read the signs. I don't know why I left you in this time. I must be blind. So the next thing I'm going to do, basically to help build energy in the track, is I'm going to add some rhythm to this chord progression. So I've already done that here. So if I play it for you, you'll see that it's the same chord progression, but now it basically has a lot more groove to it. So this piano is from True Piano. So True Piano is at the moment is offering a demo for 90 days, but it comes with just one basic preset with multiple presets within it. So I always use this pop one and I turn up this velocity threshold. So if I put this up more, you'll see it gets a lot more louder. So if these sort of dance pianos, I sort of have it maybe around here. So this chord progression can also be used in the drop as well. And to add rhythm, basically I just cut it up. Where there's gaps in the progression, I use the root note of the chord progression just to add a note at the top. And then in the bigger gaps, I just add basically a couple of notes that just bring it into the next chord. So again, this is quite simple. It's just thinking of rhythm in your head. Basically, you can clap it out or you can write a drum pattern to it and then just basically cutting up the chords to make it fit. So I've gone ahead and added some more elements to this now. So the first, we have the same piano as earlier, the same vocal, but now in the second half, I've added a double vocal and that sounds like this. I've added a sub bass to both parts of the piano. So that's made in silent one. It's called the preset simple sub. And then for the EQ, I've cut it at 100 hertz because you don't need any other frequencies for the sub bass. And I normally cut around 30 hertz for when I have a kick and things like that. I've also added a pad to the piano to basically bring it out and add warmth to the track. So that again is made in silent one. And it's a preset by Nicky Romero from Splice called Miss. And on the EQ there, I've cut at 150 hertz to make room for the sub, and then just the high end to basically make it more like a pad. So those two elements with the piano sound like this. We then added another sound from Silent One, but in the chord progression, I've cut it up like this to make it more rhythmic. And the preset is basically made from a saw wave and sounds like this. I've got channel EQ to cut up the low end again to make room for the bass, compression, and direction mixer to make it more stereo. If you press A on the keyboard, you can also bring up automations. So in this, we're gonna automate the filter cutoff in Silent One, so it rises towards the end of this progression and basically helps with the energy of the track. So if I show you what I mean here, I'm just gonna build it up. In this menu here, if you press automation curve tool, hold command on the keyboard, you can then make a curve and that helps to bring it in a bit more slowly. I then also added a clock from Kashmir that sounds like this. So altogether, this section now sounds like this. I forgot to mention the snap as well. I got this from Splice. In the second half, I've copied the same sub bass, but I've changed the groove to make it fit the chord progression. And I've also added a second bass again from Silent. It's from Nicky Romero's sound pack Sabre, and that sounds like this. On the EQ, I've cut out the low end to make room for the sub, so you don't want too many basses playing together, otherwise the low end of the mix will sound really muddy, 
and no matter how low the volume is, it's always going to sound bad. And I've cut out some of the high frequencies because it's only an intro bass, so it doesn't need to be so powerful. OST for compression and direction makes sense to put the bass basically into mono. I then found in the same sound pack of the vocal, this vocoder pad that sounds like this. And then two drum samples to add rhythm. So this section now sounds like this. Because this is a beginner's guide, I've made a very simple drop just to show you the sort of elements that you should have in a drop. So at the moment, it sounds like this. So in this, we have the same piano as in the build-up, but now we've added Kickstart, which is a side chain. So for this genre of track, I'm only using the free punch because I don't want it to be too obvious in the mix. I then added this guitar. This from Amp Guitar, which is a free plugin. So again, resonant frequencies, I've cut them out. and I've cut out the low end to make room for the bass. And in this example, I've got three basses, a sub bass, a mid bass, and a top bass, and they sound like this. So the sub bass is the same from earlier, but again, we've added the side chain. The second bass is the same from earlier as well. We've added the side chain and we've opened up the high cut frequency a little bit more, so we get more of it in the mix. And then the third bass is from Silent One, and that's a preset that I made, basically a square wave, and that basically resembles a guitar bass. Now I've added some low cut filter and a high cut filter, so it's not so in your face in the mix. Direction makes it to make it mono and kickstart again for sidechain, and that sounds like this. And for the lead, I just add this very basic vocal chop. If you don't know how to make vocal chops and you wanna learn, I'll link a video above. I've done a tutorial on that before. And at the end of each of these four bars, I've added a tape stop effect. To do that, you just select the audio file, go up to here where the arrow is, select slow down, and then I normally put about 200, 150 is 200, and that effect on its own sounds like this. That can help add groove to the track. In terms of the drums, I've just got a kick and a clap. In the kick, I've added some EQ just to cut out a frequency there that was just pumping through the mix very loudly. A Camel Crusher to compress it, I've used a Subtle Master preset there. Direction Mixer to put it into mono. A kick start so that the bass and the kick don't interfere. And just another EQ at the bottom. For the clap, I've just added a channel EQ. And then these down lifters at the bottom, they're side chains so they're not really loud. And then EQ is cut at the low end. So overall, the drop is very simple, but it contains elements that if you build upon, it can sound really cool. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave in the comments what you guys want to see in future videos and I'll be sure to try and make as many of them as possible.